Welcome back, fourth grade scientists. Today we're going to talk about changes in energy when objects collide. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe energy and collisions by making predictions in order to explain how energy is transferred. What are collisions? A collision is when two objects hit one another. What are some examples of collisions you may have seen? Take a look at this first example. In a game of bowling, the bowling ball hits the pins. That's an example of a collision. When the pins fall over, they also collide with one another and the floor of the lane. Here's a simple example, a high five. When two hands hit one another, that's another example of a collision. Kickball is a very popular recess game that is also filled with collisions. Watch as the pitcher rolls the ball down to the kicker. The person's foot collides with the ball when it is kicked. Think about how you tag someone out of the game. You either touch the person with the ball or throw the ball at them. Even running from base to base means that your feet are colliding with the ground. These are more examples of collisions. Baseball games are also filled with collisions. Watch as the baseball player hits the ball with the bat. If you look closely, the ball actually collides with the bat multiple times. As the bat breaks, it wobbles and hits the ball several times. These are examples of more collisions. Many people love to watch football in the fall. Football is a game filled with collisions. Watch as the two players tackle one another. They collide with one another and also with the ground as they fall down. As you saw from the examples, collisions are everywhere. In order for collisions to occur, objects must be in motion. Motion is the way an object changes its position or location. An object will not change its motion unless a force acts on it. In kindergarten, you participated in a science unit called Pushes and Pulls. This unit was all about the different forces involved in our everyday lives. For example, in this clip, we see the windmill is actually being pushed by the wind, but is also pulling the cup up from the ground. Objects push against one another when they collide, and that's the force that we'll focus on for the rest of our time today. A force is a push or a pull. In this first example, we have two lambs. The first lamb is pulling the second lamb on a skateboard. This causes a change in motion. In this next example, we have several children pushing a car. That causes the car to change in motion as well. We've learned before that moving objects have energy. Energy can be transferred or sent to a different object. When objects collide, there is a transfer of energy. This means that when objects hit one another, energy is sent from one place to another or one object to another. Let's apply what we've learned about how energy changes when objects collide to real life games and activities that you may have participated in. Angry Birds is a very popular game that has even turned into two movies recently. The game is filled with collisions. We will use it as an example to make predictions about energy transfer during a collision. Take a look at a portion of the game, then we'll talk more about the collisions we saw and how energy is being transferred. Let's use this as an example to describe how energy is transferred when objects collide. When the bird flew toward the tower, it had energy because it was in motion. We know that when objects are in motion, they have energy. When the bird hit the tower, it actually transferred some of its energy to the tower. How do we know this? Well, the tower started to move. The blocks in the tower started to wobble and fall. That's because some of the energy from the bird was transferred to the tower. Let's watch this first clip one more time. As you watch, focus on the bird. Think about how much energy the bird has and what effect that energy has on the tower and the pig. If the bird has a lot of energy, what will happen to the tower? If the bird has a little energy, what do you think will happen to the tower?
Now that we've rewatched and focused on the bird, what do you think about the bird's energy? The bird actually had little energy. We know this because when it collided with the tower, it transferred little energy to the tower. When the tower was hit, the pig did fall, but it wasn't destroyed. If the bird flew with more energy, it would have had a bigger impact on the tower. We would expect to see the tower fall faster, more energy would have been transferred, and the pig might have been destroyed immediately. This time, the bird will fly with a different amount of energy. Watch what happens when the objects collide. This time, the bird flew with a lot more energy. We know this because not only did the bird fly farther and was able to land a lot closer to the tower, but it also transferred more energy to the tower. We know this because the blocks in the tower fell quickly and the pig was destroyed almost immediately. Let's think back to our bowling example from the beginning of this lesson. As the ball hits the pins, a collision occurs and energy is transferred. The ball slows down a little bit, but energy is transferred to the pins and the pins are in, now in motion. In this example, when the baseball collides with the bat, energy is transferred in several ways. First, the baseball transfers its own energy to the bat, which also starts to cause it to break. The bat transfers some of its energy to the ball, which helps the ball to move and change direction and go out into the outfield. In this final example of a game of pool, we have lots of transfers of energy because we also have lots of collisions. First, the white ball hits the yellow balls and the white ball transfers its energy to the yellow balls, which then transfer energy to one another as they collide. The amount of energy an object has will affect the result of the collision. In this first example, the baseball player hits the ball with a lot of energy and a lot of force. That makes the ball go very far in the outfield. In this second example, the baseball player hits the ball with a little bit of energy and a little bit of force. Notice the difference in how far the ball is able to travel. The ball moves much closer to the home plate compared to the other ball that was hit with a lot of energy. Let's do an investigation to put what we've learned about collisions and energy into practice. In this investigation, we have a red car and a green car. The red car will receive a hard push down the ramp and the green car will receive a soft push down the ramp. Take a moment to make a prediction about what you think will happen when the two cars collide. Let's see if your prediction was right. When the two cars collided, the red car that received the hard push had more energy than the green car that received the soft push. The red car was able to transfer some of its energy to the green car and cause it to roll backwards. In this investigation, we have one car that will be pushed. The red car is going to be pushed into the green car. If you notice, the green car is actually slightly bigger than the red car. Make a prediction about what you think will happen when the objects collide. Let's see if your prediction was correct. You should have predicted that the red car, when it was in motion, had energy, and then when it collided with the green car, it would transfer some of its energy. The red car transferred some of its energy to the green car, which caused a change in motion and caused the green car to roll down the ramp. For this final investigation, we have a red car that will be pushed into a brick wall. Make a prediction about what will happen when the objects collide.
Do you think your prediction was correct? Let's view the investigation to see what happened. This time, when the red car was in motion, it collided with the brick wall, but the brick wall did not move. It actually pushed the red car backward. So some of the energy of the car was transferred into the wall, and that energy actually pushed the car backwards. Our final question in this lesson is where does the energy go? In each one of our examples and in our investigation so far, the objects moved after a collision, but eventually they stopped. What happened to the energy that caused them to move? Where did it go? Energy is also transferred in other ways during a collision. We know the energy has been transferred because we may hear a sound and or feel heat. This means that energy is not just transferred from one object to another, but it's also transferred to the air, which causes vibrations, which helps us to hear the sounds. Let's learn a little bit more about sound waves and how they work to understand how we can hear sound during a collision. It's another day at the Discovery Science Alliance Academy, an elite academy where recruits learn to think things through, examine the data, apply the tools, master the skills, to become a team called the Discovery Science Alliance. Before you can solve mysteries, you've got to learn to think things through. Do you have what it takes? Yeah, I am so ready. Let's go! Sound is all around us. The wind moving through the leaves. Rain hitting your roof. Your pencil moving across paper. A giant clap of thunder. Or you clapping your hands. But what is sound? Sound is a type of energy. Sound is made when an object vibrates and those vibrations spread through something that surrounds it. When an object vibrates on Earth's surface, like the strings on this cello, the vibrations cause the air particles around the object to move. They push against air particles around them, and a wave of energy starts. The sound wave starts moving until it runs out of energy. The important thing is that sound needs something to travel through. When an object vibrates underwater, the object vibrates the water around it. When an object vibrates in outer space, like that astronaut working on the space station, there's nothing around to vibrate. Someone not connected to the space station wouldn't hear a sound. So, when you clap your hands, the force of your two hands coming together causes the air particles around them to move. If someone is standing nearby you, those vibrations will travel into their ear. As we've seen in our lesson today, Energy transfers are everywhere, and collisions are everywhere. Take a look at the girl on the left. She's stomping her foot on the ground. As she stomps her foot, energy is transferred from her foot to the ground, but the energy is also transferred to the air. That's the reason we can hear the sound of her foot stomping. Take a look at the boy on the right side of the screen. He's diving into the pool. What type of sound would you expect that to make? The reason we can hear the sound is because energy is not just transferred from his body to the water, but it's also transferred to the air, which helps us to hear the sound of the splash. In our lessons today, we talked about and described energy and collisions by making predictions, and we were able to explain how energy was transferred. As you go about your day, think about different ways that you experience collisions. You might not even realize how many collisions you create an experience throughout the day. As you focus on these collisions, think about how energy is transferred from one place to another or one object to another, and see if you can figure out why the sounds that we can hear are being produced and how they relate to energy being transferred. Good luck, scientists.